they see themselves as a long-term uh, capability and a long-term threat. And, uh, and we, should, we should look at it like that. We should not uh, think that they are, you know, flash in the pan at all. And that was retired Lieutenant General uh, Michael Flynn speaking back in December to a CEO conference sponsored by the Wall Street Journal talking about how we really need to view ISIS. Yeah, General Flynn spoke yesterday on ISIS and he didn't hold back on how he felt the Obama administration was handling the war on Islam extremists. The general described the administration as paralyzed and playing defense when it comes to ISIS. So are these sentiments felt throughout our intelligence community? Joining us now, our friend Fred Rustman, former CIA case officer. So he is, knows where he speaks when he authored the book, eponymously known as the case officer. Fred, it is so good to have you here today. Thanks for coming back to America's Forum. It's great to be here. You were here previously and you made mention of General Flynn, but now his remarks are really drawing a lot of attention. Is he on target? I think he probably watched the show. Uh, of this course is he exactly did. Exactly what we what we said the last time. If you can't identify the threat, you can't you can't fight the threat. You need a strategy, and in order to have a strategy, you need to have a target. And terrorism is is not a target. Terrorism is a tactic. Uh, Islamic terrorism is the target. That's that's who we ought to be looking at. Right. And what should we be doing? What should we be doing against yeah. Islamic terrorism? As I mean, how, how would you basically rate the Obama administration's handling of ISIS? Oh, uh, and uh, Islamic D, other D Islam minus, D minus, D minus, F. D really? minus, maybe F. It's terrible. You've got to, again, you've got to identify the target. And uh, the way we fight Islamic terrorism, we're doing it, uh, we're doing it abroad, at, at its core, mm -hmm. through the bomb strikes and what have you. This is, this is great. We need more of the same. Here in the United States, we need to put pressure on the Muslim community. Hard, hard pressure on the Muslim community to stand up and, and uh, ferret these guys out of their own community. Take a stand. They haven't done it yet. And that's what we need to do. As we see footage from the Middle East, uh, some of those engaged in jihad against uh, our forces there and against uh, other allied nations in the area. Back to what General Flynn had to say, and this has been the pull quote that everyone seems to look at. Quoting now, you cannot defeat an enemy you do not admit exists. Right. Which is what you just Which said. Which is what I just said. You've got to identify the threat. The threat is not terrorism. Terrorism is a tactic used by all kinds of armies. Well, in so what is the real threat? Islamic extremism is the real threat. These people believe that they have been told by God to come down and kill us. And but how do you fight an ideology like that? Especially again, when people are willing to kill themselves and anyone that gets in their way. It, it's, not, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy at all. But again, it has to be done by the Muslim community. They've got to police their own. We've got to convince the Muslim community that it's in their best interests to put these guys down, to, to ferret them out, to tell us who they are, to, to rat on them. To, to, to help us recruit intelligence sources within, within their ranks. Uh, you taught tradecraft and espionage at the farm, in addition to being a case officer. Maybe a two-pronged question. And of course, the charter of the CIA, you couldn't do it with the CIA. I don't know if the DIA, the FBI, but somebody has to build up, it would seem to me, within the domestic Islamic community, a cell of officers to really engage in a kind of counter espionage domestically. Well, what you do is recruit. Um, you, you don't take a case officer, a person just like you or me, mm -hmm. uh, an American citizen who speaks English and was raised here in the country and has a top secret security clearance. You don't take somebody like that, teach him Arabic, and then try to infiltrate him into the community. It's not the way it's done. The case officer is somebody just like us who goes out and recruits somebody who is already knows the language, is familiar with the, with the culture, and that's the t person that infiltrates that community. But how likely is that going to happen? Oh, it happens all the time. That's what we do. That's what the intelligence services do. That's what the CIA's main charter is, to recruit spies who are penetrations of organizations, countries, 
organizations that we need to have intelligence uh, on. Of course, the CIA's charter is internationally rather than domestically. Well, then you've or got have, the FBI. Yeah, that's right. So the FBI would do it here, which yeah. brings us to the other, the other story. And that is recruitment of Americans, the discovery of a Russian spy ring, what, in New York? It's, it's shades of the Cold War. Or did that, did that really ever go away? Has it ever been thus in our relationship with Russia? Yeah, did the Cold War ever go away? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> what, yeah, that was espionage thing, yeah. with Russia. You know. What was Putin's former job? Sure, KGB guy. <laughs> KGB yeah. guy. It's here all over again. And what they do, these knocks, these sleeper cells, uh, it's a, these are horrible operations. They're here to do two things. One, they're here to handle primarily, not recruit, but handle uh, very, very sensitive agents that have been recruited by basically inside case officers, in fact. And the reason, and the reason for that is the, the, uh, the weak link in any intelligence operation is the officially covered case officer working out of an embassy or an official capacity who leaves the embassy every day and goes out and meets his assets. That's the weak link. So, so what, what happened in this case is the two officially covered guys went out and met the knock, and that's how the knock was blown in the first place. But while this recent tension between Russia and the United States, do you think it, it's energy primarily that's stirring this all up again? Got a minute because left in this segment too, Fred. Yeah. Um, or has it always been there, like you were suggesting? It has always been there. It, these kinds of operations are not very good. These kinds of knock sleeper cell operations, these are really, this goes back to the Rosenbergs in World War II. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not very good. But the Russians like them. They like them. So they get these guys out here, and they spend a lot of money to put them here, and they try to recruit young girls off of NYU campus. It's BS. It's these are really BS operations. But the one time they get a really good asset, and he is handled by an outside knock officer, that is, that's, that's the big threat. And that is something we have to keep our eyes on. Uh, time doesn't permit us today, but in your next visit, we're hearing words that uh, what we used to call the Soviet news agency, TASS, was very much involved in this operation. So the role of so-called Russian journalists will take up in days to come. Fred <laughs> Russman, author of The Case Officer, a case officer in real life, we thank you for your time. We'll step aside now for a Newsmax Now update.